What up, Sauce Gang, and welcome back to the channel. Hot Sauce Beats here with a banger and educational reaction for you. We are diving back into In a Nutshell's channel. A couple episodes ago, they came out with one about nuclear weapons, and you guys highly recommended that we check out what if we detonated all nuclear bombs at once. Now, fair warning, this is probably gonna give us all night nightmares, and it's just a terrible thing I don't even wanna have a thought in my head about, but. We're gonna get educated. But before we do, can you show in a nutshell some love by subscribing to the channel? Fam, we're trying to get to a quarter million subs. So if you haven't yet, please smash that subscribe button and join the Souls Gang family. But enough talking. Let's get to reacting and roll that bomb ass intro. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Eat, sleep, make beats. Hot sauce beats. Woo -hoo! Hold up, wait a minute, gotta get some education in it. Many of our viewers have asked us a very serious question. What if we made a big pile of bombs and exploded every nuclear weapon in the world all Never. at once? Strangely enough, we couldn't find a good source to answer this question to our satisfaction. So, we gathered together a few scientists to calculate what would happen and find an answer what to Earth this explode? extremely important scientific problem once and for all. Currently, there are 15,000 nuclear weapons on Earth. The US and Russia both have around 7,000, while France, China, the UK, Pakistan, India, Israel, and North Korea own around 1,000 between them. But how much destructive so power is this really? Let's try to put these numbers into perspective. The whole Earth, just like little Big Bang Theory, but Earth, Big Earth Bang, Big Bang Earth Theory. On Earth, there are Earth about 4,500 cities or urban areas with at least 100,000 <laughs> inhabitants. Some are bigger than others, so we'll assume that on average, we need three nuclear bombs to completely wipe out one city. This means we could destroy every single city on planet Earth with our nuclear arsenal, killing more than 3 billion people, roughly half of humanity, in an instant. And we'd still have 1,500 nuclear weapons left. Jesus, now that's what an expert would call overkill. So we can say with confidence that we have a lot of nuclear weapons and they can do a lot of damage. But what if we make a huge pile of all 15,000 bombs and pull the trigger? Let's drop our nuclear pile in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, just to show nature who's boss. Our warheads <laughs> piled you, nature. fit into a small I don't care warehouse. if you make it rain, I'm gonna make a it rain bombs! A US warhead has the power of 200,000 tons of TNT. So 15,000 warheads would be the equivalent of 3 billion tons of TNT. For scale, this is enough to rebuild the whole island of Manhattan with every building and skyscraper using stacks of TNT. How do you, the close how do you even figure that out, dude? <laughs> how do you figure that fact? This thing we can compare to the energy gathered here is a volcano. One of the deadliest volcanic eruptions in recorded history took place in 1883 on the island of Krakatoa. The eruption was so powerful that 70% of the island and the surrounding archipelago was destroyed, killing tens of thousands of people. Its effects were felt around the world for days after the event. Our nuclear pile contains 15 times the energy of the Krakatoa volcanic eruption. Wow. So let's finally push the button. Three, two, one. Hadouken! In a second, a fireball 50 kilometers across vaporizes everything in its way and creates a blast wave that flattens 3,000 square kilometers of forest. Every living thing within 250 kilometers will start to burn. How many the miles explosion is that? will be heard literally around the world as the pressure wave circles the Earth tens of times over the next few weeks. Millions of tons of incinerated material are catapulted into the atmosphere. The mushroom cloud reaches the outer reaches of the stratosphere, pushing up against space itself. After things have calmed down, a small crater, about 10 kilometers across, is left in the center of the worst wildfires the planet has seen in millennia, spreading throughout South America, burning down forests and cities alike. And now, the unpleasant part begins. Extremely radioactive material will kill living things very quickly, and a large area several kilometers around the crater is now uninhabitable, as is everywhere for hundreds of kilometers downwind. Jesus. Much of the fallout is carried high into the atmosphere by the mushroom cloud and carried around the planet. The amount of radioactive material in the environment doubles worldwide, which still isn't civilization ending, but we may see more cancer for a while. A portion of we the particles will flow more to the cancer. edge of space for years and cause a nuclear winter Yeesh. that could lower global temperatures by a few degrees for a few years. 
This explosion was pretty bad if you're in South America and especially Brazil. The Amazon rainforest is pretty much history, which is not great. But human life will go yeah, on. We need the oxygen! OK, but what if we explode more nuclear weapons? Let's suppose humanity decided to mine every bit of uranium on Earth and build as many nuclear bombs as possible. At current usage, it's estimated that there are around 35 million tons of uranium in Earth's crust, enough to power human civilization for over 2,000 years or to build millions of nuclear warheads. For the sake of argument, let's say we create a pile with a yield of 10 billion Hiroshima bombs, which makes up a cube three kilometers high that contains roughly the energy of the asteroid impact that ended the age of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Except it's also nuclear. Three, <laughs> Except it's two, also worse. One. Our pile explodes in a fireball stretching so high into the sky that it's visible from half of South America with so much power that the ground just splashes like water, forming a crater 100 kilometers across. Bedrock on the scale of whole mountain ranges is vaporized in an instant, while thousands of tons of material is catapulted away with such speed that it's ejected into space. Some leaves Earth forever, while most of it comes raining down as hot, burning debris that heats up the atmosphere to oven-like temperatures, literally, killing most big animals and causing firestorms all over Blown the world. Up. The Earth's crust rings like a bell, struck by global earthquakes stronger than anything in recorded history, decimating cities around the world while hurricane-force winds flatten every single tree in South America and wildfires consume the continent. Every tree. The abundance of hydrocarbons in the Amazon burned to form ash are cast into the atmosphere, darting the sky and keeping sunlight from reaching the surface, dropping temperatures to near freezing worldwide. This is terrifying, Chad. The ensuing global winter may last for decades and results in the extinction of every large animal species, humans included. We could also mention that every corner of the planet is covered with radioactive fallout, but at this point, it doesn't matter that much anymore. This is humanity's extinction event. The astronauts aboard the International Space Station get to enjoy a great view for a while, but it's not unlikely that the spray of rocks blast into orbit will destroy the station. Those lucky enough to be in bunkers oh, wow. or in submarines deep below the ocean surface may survive the longest before they exhaust their food supplies and have to venture out for more. They'll find the world a charred, freezing, radioactive wasteland. I was on subs, The planet Jack. itself doesn't Let's care down there too. <laughs> After just a few million years, the wounds of the explosions have healed and life is thriving, arguably even more so than when humans were around. If intelligent life emerges again, it might be able to work out what happened. When they study geology, they'll find a bizarre and very thin layer of rock covering the entire world, enriched in radioactive elements like uranium and the other nasty things it decays to, mixed with rare earth metals and plastics that humans used. They would probably be very, very confused. <laughs> Videos like this one take well over 1,200 hours to finish. Over the years, we put more and more effort into research, conversations with experts, illustration, and animation. Bro, all right, let me bring you in. Let me bring you in, chat. Dude, in a nutshell, they bring up some pretty crazy stuff for you to think about, and it is absolutely terrifying, man. Like, I'm not... I just... I don't even want, like thoughts like that being in my head. I don't want to know. I don't want to think of the day of more nukes going off, but it's good to know what's going to happen. And that's adios amigos. <laughs> See you later, alligator. Dude, that last one, like literally blew up over half the continent, just like that. And they said there was so much pressure, the ground would just like go away like it's a wave. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Also, I love checking out this channel. Let me know some other videos you want me to peep out. But in the meantime, can you show in a nutshell some love by subscribing to the channel and family? We're trying to get to a quarter million subs. So if you haven't yet, please smash that subscribe button and join the subs gang family. Enjoy the rest of your evening air, remember? It's eat, sleep, and make beats and as usual, we count on another. That's all I got. Boom, I'm out. <laughs> Don't have any nightmares. Got them my love. For the subs gang, peace out, chat boy.